we have a terminal building that will compete with any terminal building in the world in terms of smartness, in terms of functionality, in terms of what is designed for security, safety, everything put together. It's designed to give travelers a very pleasant and pleasantly surprising airport experience. An ecosystem of aviation activity, a hub airport with a successful home base carrier, with capacity to maintain aeroplanes belonging to Ibom Air and other airlines. Everyone who wants to take benefit should begin to find something related to aviation and study. So, as a lawyer, I should be interested in aviation law, in the rights of passengers. What are the standards? What are the rules? They're going to need engineers. They're going to need cleaners. They're going to need everybody from all aspects of the spectrum of work. Aviation developments has continued to witness great innovations through unending deployment of science and modern technology adaptation for operational successes. In this regard, the concept of smart airport has become the new trend with a view to eliminating the drawbacks of the conventional airport system. Since becoming a player in the aviation sector, Aquarium State has continued to break new grounds and set standards in the West African sub-region and African continents. Ibom Air, solely owned by Aquarium State, has become an industry leader of repute since commencing operation in 2019 and has won many awards for its excellent services. The one thing we know how to do is how to utilize aeroplanes. We maximize their utilization and uh, we do it profitably. And so uh, the plan is, is very carefully put together uh, to increase the fleet to be able to do the frequencies that we're going to be doing outside of the country. Um, so yes, everything has gone well. We continue to deliver on our business plan. With the new terminal at the Victor Atar International Airport, which is awaiting inauguration, Aquibum will again blaze the trail by entering the league of firsts in the development of smart airports in Africa. We have a terminal building that will compete with any terminal building in the world in terms of smartness, in terms of functionality, in terms of what is designed for security, safety, everything put together. I stand bold to say that this will still maintain the smartest terminal building as of today in Africa. I don't know what other countries will do tomorrow. This is clearly a very strategic step in the plan of the aviation ecosystem where you're having a smart terminal building as a starter point. So a terminal building where the fourth industrial revolution can operate with them. So you're going to talk about the internet of things, you're going to talk about the capacity for a human machine interface to occur within the airport and it, it would now help with um, seamless transition of passengers. The three-story building is built to house both the international and domestic terminals with the ground floor serving as a check-in concourse, while the first floor will be for arrival and the second floor will be for the departure area. It's designed to give travelers a very pleasant and pleasantly surprising airport experience. From arrivals to departures, if you're coming to, to connect to another flight, if you're coming here to fly or originating out of here, if you arrive here as your destination, all three types of passengers are going to get a very, very pleasant airport experience. That's the basis upon which we're going to sell this hub. That come and have a seamless experience flying out of Nigeria and flying into Nigeria and connecting seamlessly with Lagos, Abuja, elsewhere or coming from the south or the east of Africa and connecting to the west and from the west all the way to the east and on both places into Central Africa we are going to create that kind of ecosystem. It is going to be, a, you know, a tourist hub, it's going to be a business hub, it's going to, you know, be a place that employment is being created you know, for people to be actively involved. The terminal will feature state-of-the-art technology in airport terminal equipment, safety and security, 
access control, fire detection and suppression, lighting and power, and CCTV system, among others. In terms of uh, provisions for commercial services, retail areas, concession spaces, a lot of those provisions have been made in the terminal building projects. A lot of them, uh, as is the case in constructions of this uh, scope and magnitude, what we are doing right now is uh, making sure that all the reservations they need for plumbing, electrical services, air conditioning, those reservations have been made. The airport has uh, at least uh, four escalators. There are about uh, 12 elevators uh, within the building. Uh, because of uh, the smart nature of the terminal building, there are at least uh, four power substations within the building. Aside from the one that uh, will control the car park, the automated, automated uh, car park management system, and uh, the one in the utility center building, where all the essential facilities like transformers, backup generators, even the fire, water, and uh, domestic water systems are coming from to service the main building. You know, so a lot of those uh, strategic planning components are already uh, being uh, installed. When it comes on stream, the new terminal will exit the Victor Attar International Airport from the class of traditional airports that run manual processes and basic IT protocol as digital baggage monitoring, facial recognition, biometric identifications and other artificial intelligence concomitants will become integral parts of daily operational processes at the facility. So we're going to look at the terminal building prepared to process a million passengers in a year. That's a good start point. But obviously, by the time that starts, uh, Victor Tan International Airport would need expansion. It would need expansion very quickly. But the idea is start small and begin to grow. Seeing safety of passengers and crew is key to aviation operations. Then, another component that is set to enhance the top rating of the aviation ecosystem in Aquibum as the maintenance repairs and overhaul facility. The facility has 12,000 square meters of hangar space with 800 square meters of workshop and office space. This facility is, is uh, quite big. It's the, the biggest in, in West, Western and Central Africa. And um, definitely, as I said before, it's, we are proud to be part of this. This, this uh, hangar will take two 747 aircraft at the same time. It's got 12,000 square meters. It's got all the facilities for maintenance in terms of workshops and all aspects of the plane in terms of all the checks can be done in this facility. This facility will be run by international um, um, operator with, with the help and with the, the cooperation of the Aquarium government. And, and Ibomir, of course. And definitely, it's, uh, it's something to be proud of. It is, is one of the best facilities uh, compared to other places in the world, Europe, Europe America, South Africa for that matter. Um, I think in Africa, the biggest competitor in this space is South Africa, also Ethiopia and Kenya, and of course Egypt. But I mean, from, from what we've created here is not to, to, to stand back for any other facility like this in the world. Also, Airbus, a world-class aircraft manufacturing company, is already training some Aquibum indigents to get certified as pilots and engineers, even as others are undergoing different professional trainings in different areas of aviation. Well, yes, Airbus is a very strong partner of ours. Uh, we're buying a few of their aeroplanes, so they are very interested in helping us provide uh, a world-class maintenance facility for that aircraft type, which is the Airbus A220, and other aircraft types around the country. In fact, Airbus Consulting is helping us uh, put together the business plan uh, for the MRO. 
It is heartwarming that the MRO has already commenced test operations. We have the capacity now in Ibome to do a series of very intense deep checks on the CRJ 900. We built that capacity. What they just did there was a, a, a six year check on the aeroplane, which is a very intense maintenance check on the aeroplane. They strip it down and they strip it back up, almost like somewhere between a C and a D check in the way it used to be called before. Uh, very few people would understand that, but it's basically a, a very intense maintenance that has just been done that we got the approval to do because we built the capacity. This therefore means that some major checks and maintenance works for aircrafts in the fleets of Ibom Air and other companies in and outside the country will now be carried out in Akwaibom. This will not just attract foreign exchange directly to the state, but will inevitably attract mangas development in different sectors like the real estate development, commerce, support infrastructure development and tourism. It's going to become a center of aviation activity, an ecosystem of aviation activity, a hub airport with a successful home base carrier, with capacity to maintain aeroplanes belonging to Ibom Air and other airlines, with a terminal that facilitates huge hub operations that allow people to come into Uyo and transfer elsewhere, international to international, domestic to regional, etc., etc. So, uh, look at Uyo in five years' time. It will be a very, very active aviation ecosystem, uh, one that I think will contribute immensely to the growth of the industry in Nigeria. As the fleet of Ibom Air grows and the airline expands its operation to commence regional operations, even as the Victor Atai International Airport becomes an aviation hub, sustaining comprehensive network at a higher frequency than it is currently operating, the economic potentials of the state will concomitantly grow through enhanced foreign direct investments, tourism, and positive multiplier effects on local businesses. Everyone who wants to take benefit should begin to find something related to aviation and study. So, as a lawyer, I should be interested in aviation law. I should be interested in the rights of passengers in aviation. What are the standards? What are the rules? Because immediately these things commence, then suddenly people are going to run foul of the law. There will now be where there is a wrong, there must be a remedy. So it is who knows the remedy so that we don't just sit here and fold our hands and people arrive here and take benefits of that because it's a global industry. When the MRO comes on stream, you're going to have people who do the support services and in that industry you still have the skilled, highly skilled and unskilled and the strategic disposition of governance and governments in Aquabum State will be to bring local contents to bear. So local content will benefit from it. Where that airport is today, if you take stock of the number of people who work there, either directly or indirectly, people who run taxis and who do, and the airport hasn't even gotten to its peak yet. So by the time the airport peaks and you begin to process a million passengers, almost everything, you now you're trading with a million people, almost everything you do there has direct and indirect benefits. So what should our people do? So people should learn to have a nose for investments. We have employed more than 500 people, of which 350 are acquired bombers, and in a good salary, in a good company. We spend approximately 10 billion naira a year as at last year in Aquaibo. Suppliers of our catering, the small tiny companies that were just doing a meat pie three years ago that we invested in to become our suppliers are now supplying us heavily. They've upped their game to be able to provide the quality of uh, in-flight uh, uh, snacks and food that we, that we need for our and imagine how much that is going to grow as we go into the hub and start going in. All of them have increased their employment by far. We've opened access to Aquaibom. The fastest growing airport in Nigeria is Uyo. So many people are coming into Uyo, the hotels are full. They've never been this full before. From as far as Zamfara to Kebi to Yobe to Adamawa, 
government agencies, private companies, all of them are doing their breakaways and their strat sessions and everything. They are doing them in Uyo. The people have, there's access to Uyo. Every hotel has employed so many more people in the last couple of years to meet up with this demand. If not for COVID that slowed it down, I only God knows how far we would have come by now. The change that's going to take place in running this terminal, my estimation is at least 10 times the staff they have now. They're going to need 10 times that. They're going to need engineers. They're going to need cleaners. They're going to need everybody from all aspects of the, of the uh, spectrum of, of work. So imagine that. Then imagine the MRO. Then imagine the expansion of the airline. Imagine the, the knock-on effect of that economically in the state. In aviation development, the airport is a city. The airport is a village. The airport is not just a location. The airport spreads into town. So, what is happening in Victoria Thai International Airport is the starting point of an airport village. Because you're going to have the MRO there, which is ready for completion. And the MRO would attract companies, attract people, attract investments in different sectors, investments in tourism, investments in real estate. You're going to have people know that Aquabum exists because that airport is there. Sitting with the governor and his vision, he sees that kind of ecosystem of Ethiopia happening right here in Akwaibo. That's why we have the world-class MRO. We have the best terminal in the country we're about to, uh, to commission. And it's, it's a deliberately designed hub terminal for Ibomen's operations. So it's going to change the game, basically. And we have a world-class airline also with, with, with a very efficient, modern fleet of aeroplanes. But right now, we're just going to take our own space and establish our own bona fides as a reliable, world-class regional airline. The Ibom Air is the toast, but it's not just Ibom Air. It's the total package, the ecosystem, the support systems, the strands, the vents, the arteries that will, in a whole, deliver to the world. Because immediately you have efficient services. You're no longer delivering to your community. You're delivering to the world. Who deliver to the world a first-class aviation structure.